Um, we have an annual conference every year um, called the Nonprofit Technology Conference. So it's NTC is just for short, uh, the name of the conference. And it's a really great conference, amazing people. And the people that attend this are all nonprofits. You know, they want to change the world. There are some vendors. Technically, I'm a vendor. Yeah. But, you know, it was really, it's always amazing. And I always meet really great folks. So it's a lot. Yeah. Of and, you know, when I'm we're running the conference, we don't necessarily get to go to that many sessions. But I got to go to Janet's session this year. And it was <laughs> awesome. I took all these notes. So um, I need to put in the shared notes still. But um, I learned a lot of cool stuff. So that, that that's, that's cool. really nice. I love it. Love it when I can get to another session and actually um, learn some things, too. Um, but uh, yeah, if you are, if anyone listening is interested, there are a lot of, um, even if you were there, there are a lot of, um, there's shared notes and there's um, some vi video interviews um, and as well as audio interviews that are all um, on the site and it's just n10.org slash NTC. Um, so that's, that's where you can kind of get a taste, you give it a taste of some of it. So. It is, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we're here to talk about community management and that's that's your function at N10. Um, yeah, um, so I worked as, about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I started off at N10 as uh, the community manager and now I'm uh, working as a membership director, but community, but underneath our membership is like a lot of, is our online communities, including our social media and also our online groups and, um, and just a community as a whole, both members and non non members. Hmm. So, what do you find challenging? Let's start with the challenges first about <laughs> yeah. managing a community of that size. Um, the challenge I find is that people come to our community for very different reasons, um, and it's kind of similar makeup that you described at the conference, Janet. Is that lots of times there's folks that um, Lots of times there are folks that are either vendors or sometimes there are folks that are, you know, that are wanting to get their word out about product to, to other people. Um, sometimes people come to the community because they're a really small organization that doesn't have a lot of resources and they're just, they're, they're the default tech person just because they're the only person of three people that knows more about technology. So it's kind of trying to speak to all those people in a way that is going to be engaging for all of them, even though they have really different motivations. And I think that's been some of the challenge. And we have something that we do for new users when people get kind of our new user onboarding as they get a series of kind of auto campaigns that come from that. And one of the things I'm one of the challenges I've been working with on that has been how do we revamp that in a way that's going to be more personal, you know, because and it's going to be not just throwing a bunch of information at them and seeing what's going to stick, but actually speaking right. to them in a way that's going to be really um, useful. And what do you do when you've got somebody in your community that is clearly, you know, OK, we'll put vendors on the spot, but it isn't always vendors. What you know, they're they're just totally pushing their own agenda and not really getting engaged in the community. How do we respond to those thoughtfully without, you know, smacking them, which is what we yeah. want to do. Yeah. It's really, yeah, it's really hard because sometimes you get people and it's not just vendors, you know, that are just hell bent on like my or help my organization, you know, it's just, you know, very, very self-focused. Um, I always try to, you know, I always think you, you always, always, I think sometimes people who come at that, I try to remind myself that they want to be heard. And so I think always like starting off with like some kind of acknowledgement, um, but then seeing how I can kind of redirect that energy um, into, into something that's going to be serving the group or using it as an opportunity to be like, Hey, um, you know, this is, this is um, occasionally what I'll do is I'll point them to like, you know, like, you know, like basically acknowledge what they're going through and like point them to an article that might be useful or sort of redirecting them back to if they're kind of derailing the conversation, redirecting them back to like the conversation we were having just so it doesn't, you know, completely go off on this other tangent. Um, and then in some cases, some rare cases, you have to actually, you know, point them. Um, having community guidelines is totally key. Um, so then you have something to kind of point to. I have a cat that seems to want to join the conversation here too. <laughs> um, 
And uh, so one thing that's really sometimes is having those community guidelines, because if nothing else, then it's you can point to those and then it seems like you're not singling them out. Like, no, these are the rules for everybody and where that and where that comes in. So then you have some it's it's great to have, too, because then you have some backup, too. Um, yeah, I think, you know, a lot of people don't recognize that how important community guidelines are you know they feel like oh well that just you know that just makes the moderators the bad guy but it actually really empowers the moderators because now there's groundwork there and there's a there's a place for them to go and go okay you know i understand that you've got an issue but these are the rules and we really want to stick to those mm -hmm. yeah yeah and as helene wrote in there um uh, you know, you don't have to look like the bad guy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, Helena. Yeah. So people feel listened to, even if you're sort of gently disciplining them, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. And um, what I'll do too is I'll tweet out after this, or you know, folks can find it on Pinterest, but um, there is a, a community, a great community person, uh, Deborah um, Askinave, and she mm -hmm. has a she has a great set of Pinterest board that's just all these different um, community management and moderation is for a variety of different communities, both for profit, nonprofit, um, you name it. Um, and so it's a really good collection. So if you're looking to try to get some examples to kind of if you're developing your own, it's a really good um, resource for that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Deborah's pretty awesome. She's really fun. And uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's got a lot of really great tips. So when we're talking about building out those, let's say that we're thinking about starting a new community and, you know, we kind of know what our market is, but how do we, how do we start setting up those guidelines? Um, what examples would you give to somebody, you know, beyond what Deborah does, but what should we be thinking about when we want to set up community guidelines? I think one of the key things is to think about what the purpose of your community is, um, because your guidelines are going to be a little bit different depending on who you're talking to and what you want, you know, what you want the focus to be. I mean, I think most community guidelines have like some of the basics, you know, it's like, OK, be nice to each other. You know, <laughs> you know, you're know, you like, let's let's not let's keep it civil kind of kind of things. But you also have to think about terms of your what is going to create a safe space for the people that are coming to your community to want and what is going to also encourage them to want to share, because you have to also think about. So you're thinking about what your motivations are for the having the community in the first place and, you know, what your business goals are with that. Um, and whether you're a nonprofit or not, you're going to have business goals. And uh, and uh, also, but then also what's going to motivate the, the community to want to be there with you? Because they're not going to have your business goals. They're going to have their own goals. And so how are you going to set up some guidelines and some incentive and some things in place that are going to encourage them to want to share and be a part of the community. Mm, yeah, that's really important. I like what you said about giving them a safe space, because I think a lot of times people feel they're a little tentative to engage in, in a new community. Um, and sometimes they feel like they can't really say what they really think because they might get nailed for it, um, which brings us to the topic of trolls. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Well, so I've been fortunate enough that like, you know, I, the communities that I've managed have largely been, you know, focused around like nonprofits and tech. And occasionally mm -hmm. there, there gets to be some heated discussions. But for the most part, it's been, you know, like people keep it pretty civil. We've only had like a real handful of trolls. And I think I've only ever had to ban like one person other than wow. other than um, other than, you know, you just you're your run of the mill spammers. Mm -hmm. uh, but but you know, when you're talking about a community that is a much more sort of weighty topic, like whether it's sometimes there's support communities around some kind of health issue, or if there is something where it's, um, you know, where there's privacy implications. Um, and then I think also sometimes with, um, you know, a community that's maybe involved in like political discussion, you know, is doing some kind of political organization. Anytime there's kind of a more of a heated issue, I think that's where you're going to definitely run into more of that troll, you know, the troll aspects. Um, yeah. 
Um, and uh, great, I was looking at some of the comments on there. Um, what, a question about like, what would be a good incentive for community members to play nice and engage and share? Um, I think I think some of it is like, you know, kind of stating stating sort of what the goals of the community are. It's like, hey, we want to help you, you know, get, you, you know, here's how we think this will help you achieve your goals. So I think that um, that's a one way to one way to get um, one way to get them to to your kind of an incentive that I that I found really useful is um, is uh, just sh wanting to share information. Um, I think a lot of times when people come to our community and they're able to see that, you know, people get a response right away or they get they get information that's just offered to them beyond like necessarily what they're asking for and they get that from other people, they realize that like, oh, hey, like this is a place where we can share, like we're not competing necessarily, you know, like, because um, I think sometimes, you know, and there's this feeling of scarcity sometimes, at least in the nonprofit world where like you feel like, oh, I can't you know, like we're all competing for the same donation dollars. And like, I think the feeling experience people have when they get to our community is that, or that we hope that they have is, is that they, they get there and they say like, oh, wow, people are actually really freely sharing information like this. Is great. Um, I know for me, I started off as a, as a member of, of N10 before I was, you know, community manager there. And it, that was the thing that always blew me away. It was like, I was like, People are just offering, like no one's paying the money to like respond to my question, you know, about a database. Yeah. So um, I think, I think, uh, I think definitely being really responsive is one thing, but I think also um, when people see that, that, like the tone, you know, sort of modeling that tone yourself, but then also having a few key people that are willing to help you model, you know, what that, what that focus is and mm -hmm. you know, making that, making sure they're aware of what the guidelines are. Yeah, Kristen agrees with that, I think, too, that, you know, it's always useful to have an experience as a member first, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's something that helps a lot because then you understand the tone of the community. If you're coming into an established community as the community manager and you kind of suddenly take over and start acting all moderatory, then that may not be the best way to, you know, join a new community. You really kind of want to lurk a little and, and see what the flavor of the community is and how they talk to each other. Yeah, I, I definitely. And I, I've pretty much always, anytime I've thought about just engaging in a community as a user is I'm usually a lurker. And so it's kind of that good point of like one thing to think about with your community is like you're thinking about the people that are sharing, but you also should think about the people that are lurkers because they're a part of your community too. Mm -hmm. even if they're not necessarily sharing, you know, That's some people that just never share, but they, they come all the time and, um, you know, and sometimes you hear from those people and like, you know, it does, it does matter. So like also keeping that in mind, you know, the people that visit aren't always commenting, but they're, they're also there too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, that's, that's so true. And it, it's a real challenge when, you know, sometimes we'll get brands that are setting up a new community and they're like, nobody's there and it's crickets. And, you know, it's really hard because, a new community is often very, very quiet, and only a small percentage of the people are are really having conversations. So finding ways to draw out people who are lurking, finding out maybe a little bit more about them and putting things out there that you know they're specifically interested in, or maybe even you know asking them questions or asking them to guest post. Those are ways that we can you know, really encourage them to engage. And I'm sure you have more tricks than that because you've been doing this a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's when your stats really come in handy too, is look at where these people are coming from, you know, like what, you know, like it's sometimes really helpful to look at like what, what, you know, if you have, if, if you're using, you know, a white label platform or if you're using something on your site, like look at where they're coming from, what social channels are, are they Googling something, you know, are they finding you by a Google search or, are they, you know, if so, what are they searching for? And that might be information that you want to have, you know, you want to have a topic about or you want to write an article about, or you might find, um, or you might find out that like, wow, all these people are coming from Twitter. Like we should be, you know, maybe we should share some of these, the discussions by Twitter or, you know, that kind of thing. So, so your stats can really be useful and tell you a lot about your lurkers. Wait, we have to look at our stats? 
<laughs> I know, I know, right? So shocking. What what kind of analytics um, do you usually look at when you're when you're talking about stats? So um, I it depends on what channel you're talking about. Um, like I'll use good old Google Analytics uh, for certain things on our site just to get a sense of our our audience as a whole. Um, you know, like to see what people are coming to the site, so you know what articles they're looking at. Um, and that sort of helps me in thinking about what events we want to have, or like, oh, we want to make sure we have a session about this at our conference, or, you know, that we have some kind of discussion about it, or maybe we have an online event in one of our communities about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's one, uh, what's one, uh, helpful piece of it. Um, I know, so I also look at, um, if you're, depending on if you're using some kind of forum software, they will pretty much always have some kind of analytics package in that. Um, what we use at N10 is Higher Logic, and they have they have some really great reporting in there. Um, so you can really, depending on what you're interested in, you can kind of nail down a lot of a lot of different things. Um, what's what I also, but but um, then for things like more like Twitter and the, and um, social media, um, I've been using I've used Sprout Social, which I find to be a great tool, um, and then more recently Buffer has been really great. And, um, I found Buffer to be really awesome with their customer service too, which has been been pretty cool. Um, and they're they're a little bit newer, so they don't have quite the um, nuanced of um, analytics, but it does give you a real. If you're just looking for a real basic picture, you and it makes it really easy to just look at like, hey, what what stuff are people talking about, and you get a really e easy bird's eye. Mm, yeah, and I think you know sometimes using links like Buffer links or or um, Bitly links, so that you actually you know can see are people clicking on the links and going places and looking at the information that we're sharing because a lot of people will engage by lurking and reading the material and learning, and you know you you got to figure out which of those links is working and which ones aren't working. I see yeah. we're getting quite the N10 crowd here, which is really great. Yeah, it's um, great to see you folks here. Yeah, so I um I think that's I think that's so important. You know, I think what gets talked about a lot is like, oh, we're community driven. We're a community driven organization, and we've used that letter too. You know, I've seen like a company. We really are. You know, communicate. You know, we're community driven, and it's like. Well, you have to look at like how are you marrying like if you're producing content, how are you, how are you, how are you working on the community side of it? How are you really listening to your community and responding accordingly? And what you're offering, mm -hmm. whether it's your product or content or whatever it is that you're providing, so um, let's to, to really be community driven. So I think there's there's always this interesting thing with community management is that it kind of sits at the sits at the crossroads of a couple different departments. I mean, because it's a little bit of a marketing role, but it's not just marketing. It's also very people focused. And so it's kind of you're a lot of times you're very much the translator between sometimes tech issues. Um, so between engineers and um, techies. Customer service in some respects anyway. Are folks still hearing us? We seem to be. Janet I seems to be paused here. I am. Can you hear me now? Okay, good. <laughs> I think our video just seems to be just That's seems weird. to be frozen for me. So good. Um, but I think I think definitely um, community management is one of those things that sometimes you're a translator between the engineer and the user, and then sometimes you're working very closely with marketing um, mm -hmm. to kind of be filtering. It. So you're like an you're sort of a um, a listener not only to the community but then also relaying that to your organization and trying to find a how can you can balance the motivations of both what your business goals are and then also what your users are looking for. That's a really important point because I think a lot of community managers. Um, how do I say this nicely? Community managers don't get respect <laughs> as much not as not as much respect as they deserve because. They're often thought of, oh, they're just, you know, off on whatever platform it is, managing whatever community is, and people don't really understand. Yeah, what they exactly. Do. I love that. I love that analogy of the concierge, the person that makes sure everyone is happy and facilitates happiness. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely, yeah. that's definitely the case. Um, I've, I've used this analogy or I've heard it used too uh, before, but I really like the, the idea of the party host is that, you know, you're around schmoozing and you're kind of the connector, like you two people should talk together. Like, have you, have you, have you come over here? Have you caught these mm -hmm. cocktails? And um, so kind of like figuring out that, that right, uh, right mix. But it's so, more than uh, that. Yeah, it's definitely it definitely requires being a, a people person for sure. Yeah, but it's more than that. It's also like you said, liaison. A lot of what the role of a community manager is is really cool. uh, letting the organization know what's going on with the people that they want to connect with. So there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of value there. I think Megan couldn't hear at that point. Um, there's a lot of back and forth with between the community and the management and the uh, community manager has a lot of importance in letting people know what's going on within their community. And it looks like we lost Megan for a minute. Uh, Kristen says, we have to remind ourselves that more often than not, if no one is noticing it, we're crushing it. <laughs> and that's really true. So often the community manager plays a key role that they really don't get recognized for enough. So let's hear it for the community managers. Uh, Megan's trying to come back on. I think she may have some bandwidth issues. So uh, if anybody else wants to dive in here, uh, we can certainly answer some more questions. Um, I'm gonna go back to Elena's question about what would be a good incentive for community members to play nice and engage and share. And that's really by bringing out what it is that they want to talk about. Instead of what we want to talk about and controlling the conversation, it's really important that we manage the conversation or direct the conversation in ways that make it an actual conversation. Uh, how can we get people to really be engaged? How can we get people to ask questions? How can we get people to answer other people's questions? And sometimes that's really just by saying, uh, you know, so-and-so, you might be the great, the best person to answer this question. Would you dive in? Emailing them off list, finding ways to engage with them uh, beyond just whatever platform it is that you're using, that makes people feel really vested. It makes them feel vested in the community manager, but also the community itself. And I bumped Megan out. I'm gonna see if she can come back in. Um, so there's a couple of questions in the chat that I wanna bring up. Um, David Kutcher says, I don't think community members always need to play nice or even engage, but the community manager is the person that channels the energy to be most effective. And that's really true. I mean, that's part of our thing about guiding the community is really more about guidance than it is about management, right? Um, we really want to find ways that we can enable the community to have the conversations. It's not about the community manager. Our job is to keep, the th keep things flowing, keep people talking, keep them happy, keep them engaged. And so if we can find ways to do that, then that's a win-win for everybody. And uh, you know, finding ways to connect the community to the organization so the organization sees the value of the community keeps us in our jobs, but it also keeps people happier and it keeps the community happier. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I think I'm going to uh, see if Megan can call in one more time here. We'll give her another chance to dive in. I think it might be a bandwidth issue, Megan, because I'm guessing that you can hear me now. So let me know uh, if you can hear me. We don't see your video and we can't hear you. 